Hey guys, before the off-road 360 video, I'm going to point out my accessory layout on my handlebars. I found this setup to meet my needs. The Galaxy 5 is one of my old cell phones and I took all the extra apps off it and only have my bike app, Zeopoxa Cycling, on it and only use this phone for my bike. That's better than a brick in a drawer. The phone is mounted on a Vituvia mount. I also have a Vituvia mount attached to the handlebar stem to hold a Mumkai wireless portable charger. I use the charger to extend the battery use time for the cell phone and the camera. The camera mount has a collection of parts I improvised from other mounts that I had laying around. This video was taken using my Insta 361X. This is the second week of December in eastern North Carolina and the temperature is in the low 70s, which is warm for this time of the year here. And I'm taking advantage of it for a, a 10 mile ride on my Electra XP. I've put about 90 miles on this bike since it arrived about two months ago. This will be the first time that I've ridden it off road on a dirt trail. The video is a little bouncy since my tire pressure is about 30 PSI. I should have lowered the pressure to about 20 PSI, which I will the next time that I go off road. This ride gives me a chance to play with my 360 degree camera which makes it easy to record bike rides since all I have to do is mount the camera and turn it on. No aiming or positioning of the camera. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff until I get back home and I can do the editing on my computer. Once I've gotten home and downloaded my video files to my computer, I use the 360 Studio to compose my 360 videos and then use PowerDirector to edit and create my movies for YouTube. This trail that I will be traveling is located in a small wooded area off the side of a city lithic park. It is a short narrow trail and mainly designed for foot traffic. The dirt trail is rather smooth except for the tree roots at the exit to the playgrounds. A couple of other upgrades I made on my wife's and my bikes are I replaced the seat slash saddle with bike roof seats and the seat post with Centaur Harmony suspension seat post. These two upgrades were well worth it whether you are planning to ride on or off road. I am of the age and weight now that those skinny saddles of my younger years are history. A history that I care not to repeat. Since the electric XP is a hardtail and has no front suspension, I highly recommend a suspension seat post, especially if you are going to be doing any off-road cycling. Another modification that I did to my XP, which isn't an off-road mod, is I replaced the stock 14-28 tooth Shimano freewheel with a 11-28 tooth DNP freewheel. This is a must if you reprogram your XP's controller to a class 3 28 mile an hour setting. It will allow you to take advantage of those high speed settings without outspinning your physical limits. I will be doing a future video comparing the stock setup against the modded setup. So far I've been pleased with my electric XP. The quality of material and workmanship is well within the limits for a bike in this price range. The performance of this 500 watt e-bike is spot on. The five pedal assist modes give people at different physical levels a choice to select the right level for them. The maximum speed is enough to outrun those pesky dogs and more than enough in class 3 setting for sane cycling. Only time will tell of the durability of this bike, but so far so good. If you've watched some of my other videos on this e-bike, I've commented on the inaccuracy of the controller's odometer. If you notice to the right, I have posted today's ride as recorded on my Zeopoxy app in the trip A reading from my XP controller screen. Note that the app indicated a distance of 10.46 miles and the XP controller shows 8.5 miles. 
but that's a 23% difference, which is a lot for those that have a problem with math. Earlier runs of this bike, the controller would let you change code settings to change certain readouts, but my bike was a later run, and I cannot adjust the code setting related to the odometer. I can live with this, but it is good information to know when estimating battery range for true distances. The controller's speed opter is also a little slow, but not enough to care about. Well, I'm coming to the end of my off-road portion of this ride. I appreciate y'all watching this video and hope that you found it worthwhile. If y'all already have an e-bike, maybe this information will help in buying some accessories. If you don't have an e-bike, buy one. You'll like it and it'll bring the kid back out of you. So, y'all have a nice day and be safe.